It's happening wherever you're tuned in from. I don't care if you're in the Ukraine right now under attack or you're uh, in Russia right now wondering why the hell they're invading or whatever the hell you're doing. Whatever part of the world you're in, you can forget about life for a while because this is Fun on a Clown Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Wirth, uh, May 6, 2022. This episode 147, only three away from the big 150 and uh, still don't know what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about an uh, iconic uh, comedian in the uh, Mexican community, uh, Mr. Paul Rodriguez, and what he did for uh, rights out there in California, and uh, we'll get on to all that. As always, today's episode is brought to you by G Vegas Buffalo Sauce for the spicy, sweet, savory, tasty game time. There's only one. G Vegas available at www.gvegas.webs.com. Go there, put the whammy jamma in your mouth, get it shipped right to your door. Go fresh, go green. Um, go local, you know, go local. Don't don't let a millionaire, you know, you get a new pool and a new Cadillac, man. You get the hard work and average every day, man. You give them your business. That's what you do right there, man. Okay. The guys who are working for a living trying to sell the buffalo sauce so like G Vegas. All right, Paul Rodriguez, we got a Mexican uh, stand-up comedian and actor, uh, born um, to Mexican ranchers who uh, eventually uh, migrated to California. Uh, he had a distinguished uh, career in the Air Force, uh, uh, really excelled at that. Uh, after he left that, he tried his hand at comedy, uh, pretty successful at it because, I mean, uh, I guess back then it was, it was more of a, a Caucasian male American art where, uh, you know, weren't a lot of Mexicans doing comedy. I mean, a lot of them didn't speak the English language. The ones who did were, were not, uh, how would you say it? Uh, they didn't have access, you know, it was a really prejudiced time back then. The world's come a long ways, but back then it was a different world. And, uh, but uh, to give back to his community, he, he fought and he fought and he fought to, uh, to get noticed. And once he did get noticed, he used that notoriety to fight back and give back to his community. Uh, let's see, uh, 1984, I guess uh, he was known for the ABC sitcom, a.k.a. Pablo, which, uh, yeah, I was living in California at the time, a little town named Chino below L.A., and uh, I remember the hype at school, you know, in the, uh, you know, Mexican community that, uh, a.k.a. Pablo's on TV, whoa, 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 it's fun. Um, you know, as popular was in California amongst his peers, you know, nationwide, uh, it didn't catch on, it was only canceled after six episodes, but uh, certainly... Got his name out there. I mean, if you're a comedian and you say you had six episodes of a sitcom on ABC, you know, you may not be driving Cadillacs, but damn it, you ain't working, you know, at a gas station either. You know, I mean, you're getting booked as a comic, you know, you're not making the huge bucks, but you're getting paid regular and you can make a living at comedy. OK, once you've had only six episodes, OK, you're not the big sitcom star, but you've had enough where you can get booked in local comedy clubs and you don't have to have a real job, too. You can just do comedy for a living. So that's a cool thing. Uh 1988, he became a regular on Trial and Error. Uh, that was canceled after only three episodes, so uh, not having much luck at the TV business here early on. Uh, did one season as the host of the Newlywed Game, and uh, 1990 to 93, finally did stick on on uh, Univision Television. It's a Spanish language speaking channel. And uh, I don't remember what it was. I remember the dude, Eric Estrada from Chips, man. It was like, he was the biggest thing. And after Chips <laughs> fell off the face of the earth. And uh, years later, I saw he was doing some uh, some commercial for like a call-in, uh, read a crystal ball <laughs> thing or something. And he said, man, I, re I called into the number and they read that they told me a break was going to come for me in my acting career. And he got on one of the Spanish channels. It was a soap opera on a Spanish channel. So, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, there's a big Spanish community in, in uh, California, and certainly they get a channel where, you know, it speaks their own language. It'd be like, you know, somebody from the United States moving to uh, Afghanistan or something. If you don't speak, you know, the language out there, then if you get an American channel over there, that's probably what you're going to watch because you can understand it. So same thing going on here. Uh, 2010 to 2011, uh, part of MTV's TR3s where, uh, People would send in like home videos, uh, either caught on like security cameras or cell phones or something funny happening. It was kind of a, a video bloopers of home videos, but it was, you know, a Spanish edition type of people doing dumbass things going on camera. Uh, let's see. Uh, did have a distinguished film career. Well, I, can, I can say, you know, he was never in the huge, huge blockbuster hit. He kept working. And if you can keep working in this business, that's half the battle right there, man. Uh, Let's see, he was in uh, Crocodile Dundee in L.A., uh, The Whoopi Boys, 
Uh, Blood Work with Clint Eastwood. I mean, it's not a bad name to work with in the movie industry. Icon right there. DC Cab. I remember that one was with Mr. T. I, I can't say I've seen it, but I do remember I wanted to see it. But I was living some crazy life in California. My parents were. I didn't think we had a TV at the time. We were living in some freaking pop-up camper at horse track. And it was, it was a scary thing. It wasn't much of real life going on. But uh, Born in East L.A. I remember that was the big uh, Cheech Marin movie there from Cheech and Chong. Tortilla Soup, Rat Race, and Ali with Will Smith, which I don't know if you want to brag about being in a movie with Will Smith anymore after his uh, behavior at the Oscars, but that's been beaten to death. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, you either relate to what he did or you, you don't, you know, I don't know. Personally, you know, I, I, can't, I can't, I don't think violence is a way to solve everything, but I can say we're all sinners, you know, God said it. I mean, not one of us haven't lost our head at one point in our life where we did something we probably regret and wish we could take it back. So, uh, you know, I guess uh, if he's apologetic about it, he made a mistake and, you know, you admit you made your mistake and you move forward where if he came in and said, nah, you're all wrong, man, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, you're just an ass, but he didn't do that. He seemed to take some responsibility. I don't know. The one thing that killed me, he never came out and apologized to Chris Rock. He apologized to everybody except for the guy he smacked in the damn face. I don't get that one. But, uh, all right, back to uh, Paul Rodriguez here. And I've said this before, a lot of money in voice work, man. And I got, I can't spoil the secret now, but I got some big stuff coming for him. I'm going to be doing a lot of voice work. Or it's going to be a lot, lot of voice work. And uh, it, it's scary to think I got to do that much, but it's exciting at the same time. So I'm scared and excited. But uh, Paul Rodriguez, this is voice work. King of the Hill, Dora the Explorer, uh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Clifford the Big Red Dog, uh, he uh, directed and starred in A Million to One, <laughs> which uh, that's just a funny name, not in a minute, a million to one, a million to one, so uh, I don't know if he was one or who the heck was one, but it's a funny title anyway, a title that's half the battle if you can get him interested, uh, Superhero is the big thing, I put out a movie called The World News New Superhero, so I was catching on to the big, the big Iron Man, Superman thing, Spider-Man, Hulk, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, the whole thing, man. And the child sports superhero, which is my, you got to see it. The world needs a new superhero. It's on uh, Vimeo on demand. Go check it out. It's only a buck 99. You spent crazy things on a buck 99. You got a bad cup of coffee. You spent the buck 99 on. You can go watch my movie for a buck 99. Trust me. You'll enjoy it. It's a buck 99 worth of entertainment. Trust me. Uh, let's see. He was part of the tour of the original Latin Kings of Comedy, which I guess, uh, I don't know if that was a spinoff. Must have been of the original Kings of Comedy, the original Latin Kings of Comedy. And hey, whatever sells tickets, baby. That's what I say. Let's see. Uh, had his own comedy specials, uh, Comedy Rehab in 2009 and uh, 2011, just for the record. Uh, let's see. Uh, 2021, he was on ABC's A uh, Million Little Things and uh hbo max's uh ha comedy festival he was part of that also a couple things you probably didn't know that i didn't know about paul rodriguez was uh he was in an episode of the golden girls and an episode of twilight zone which uh the golden girls i guess they had on some of the uh you know older you had betty white on there she had all the connections in the world to get the older comics on there so a lot of the older generation comics down there but the twilight zone they don't get enough credit man there was a lot of big big comedians that were on the twilight zone man that you never really heard about it was gonna was one of the side things that they did but they got they had so many on there man it's like the simpsons they've had like every freaking comedian known to mankind but the twilight zone they were big into good comedians on there man they did their part for comedy uh listed number 74 on comedy central's greatest comedians of all time and that's the list we based this podcast on. I mean, we went off the list a few times and had some, you know, great local comedians on and, you know, some comedians, newer comedians that weren't on the list when they put it out. But that has been the basis for this podcast to explore the history of comedy on. And some I know more about, some I know little about, some I know nothing about. But, man, we're still we're, we're figuring this crap out together because I like comedy. If you tune in, you like comedy, too, man. Laughter is the best medicine. Where would we all be without laughing at ourselves, right? Let's see. Um, uh, acknowledged he got a humanitarian award for uh, water conservation. I guess that's one of the projects he's big in out there in California, which they ain't got much water out there. So got to conserve what little you got and, you know, turn off the outside water sometimes and try to be responsible for what you do use inside. Uh, here's one I did not know. I knew he was a regular out there. I did not. He's part owner of the Laugh Factory in Hollywood which I thought it was some rich guy who opened them all up, but apparently they teamed up with this guy to, uh, so that's his home base right there. I'm in a laugh factory in Hollywood, which 
I performed down the street at the comedy store. That was one of my dreams in life, but I wasn't out there long enough. I definitely would like to try to get in the laugh factory and hopefully I get out there again and I pull that off. Uh, now I, I remember this one. I do remember because uh, Paul Rodriguez, he was out of the spotlight for a while, but he got back into well, Michael Richards who uh, played Kramer on Seinfeld. He, uh, went off on a really racist rant on two uh, male black hecklers calling them the N word. And it made national news. This guy career was over when that happened, man. And, you know, it happened at, you know, Paul Rodriguez's club. I didn't realize that's why they interviewed him. It was his club. I thought he was just hanging out and saw what happened, but they asked him about it. And he said, you know, you were kind of just standing there waiting for the punchline to come and it just never came. You know, it was uh, a joke that, you know, had no punchline. <laughs> And he said, you know, once the words come out of your mouth and you're not African-American, you got a whole lot of explaining to do. And, and uh, we ain't seen much from uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Richards after that happened. So that kind of brought down his career right there. And uh, kind of sad, sad ending to a otherwise great career. And sometimes you're given a second chance and sometimes you're not. It's like I said, uh, you know, it's like we said about Will Smith. I, I don't know, you know, is there going to be forgiveness for Will Smith? Well, there certain wasn't any for Michael Richards, man. It was one and done. You don't mess up like that. But who knows? Uh, hey, he ain't dead yet, so I guess he can still do something. Uh, let's see. Uh, he owned some farming operations out in California, which I guess his parents, you know, they were farmers uh, when they were young, so that's what you know. And I've been looking at the stock market lately, and they said, you know, if you're going to invest, invest in what you know. And, you know, like, don't just invest because somebody gave you good advice. Invest, you know, what did you do your whole life? What was your trade? Well, if that's your trade, you probably know what's going on in it right there, baby. So, of course, uh, I've been in the food industry for years, and uh, I did check into, I worked with Domino's for 10 years, and I checked in Domino's P. Oh, your stock's pretty damn expensive because, uh, which was funny. I remember back when I first started at Domino's, Pizza Hut was the number one, like, pizza chain. And now uh, the ones around here, they're still in business. The ones around here, though, went out of business. Where Domino's, they just keep it open and more and more and more. They're like Subway, small, compact, and boom, they just keep going. But uh, certainly if he owns a farm, it's something he knows about from his days with his parents. And that's always a smart investment, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, as I said, he's known, you know, not only water conservation, but he's known for doing a lot of charity work. He gives back. And I've said that in comedy a lot, man. It's like, I don't really need the money in comedy. It's good to be acknowledged when you do get paid. Hey, you're a good comic, but I'd rather do the charity work and see the charity organizations get the money and help out. Uh, that's why first five years of my career I worked with laughter is the best medicine and, uh, comics that care, you know, and, uh, we did a lot of gigs. Sometimes we did them for free. Sometimes we didn't gas money, but I mean, we did make a lot of money. I got to perform in front of big crowds and helped out some really great charity organizations. So I don't regret, you know, not getting the big payday one bit when you can help people out. That's a cool thing to do. Uh, he was part of comic relief. I believe that was the Robin Williams, Billy Crystal and Whoopi Goldberg, uh, big thing back in the day for the homeless. And, uh, they never let my hero Sam Kennison on. They never did that. But uh, hey, they did have some big comics on. Uh, so they were looking more like the clean comic type thing. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, 1995 did a TV special live from Sam Quentin Snake Prison. Uh, I guess that was a, uh, you know, bringing into the uh, the lives of people who have messed up. You're trying to get them back on the, the straight and narrow path. Uh, he's chairman of the, uh, Latino water commission out there in California, which we mentioned, uh, that's his big, big cause. I do a lot of, I do a lot of, uh, work with a, a child's right to both parents equally because, uh, I'm a victim of parental alienation. I've seen my son in years and it's sad to see the breaking of a child's mind like that. So I give back. I do a lot of work in that area. And apparently this guy, he gives back and does a lot of work in the uh, water conservation area. Um, he's a vocal supporter of the Republican party, but did say he voted for Obama in 2008, who of course was a Democrat. So I guess he got away from his party on that one, which, you know, I call him like I see him too, man. I, I guess I'm independent. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I kind of open my eyes and see, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, he's doing a good job because I thought Obama did a good job and I can't say so much about Joe Biden. I mean, I gotta say, you know, Donald Trump, he had a big mouth, but damn it. You weren't paying 91 bucks for a tank of gas and uh, things were things were good. I, I don't know. And they're they're not as good under Joe Biden here. So 
Call Mike, I say it, man. You know, I, I put up with a few, few crazy ass tweets and a few crazy activity. If you're going to run the country good, and I thought he ran the country good. Uh, same thing with the Clintons. Bill Clinton, he was banging everything in the White House, but damn it, he ran the country good. So nobody really cared. So I don't want to turn this into a political show. It's a comedy show, but you could joke about every one of these guys. Okay. That's why political humor is such a big thing right there because they do enough while they run the country good. There's plenty to poke fun at right there. Let's see. He endorsed Mitt Romney on his run for presidency. Um, collaborator with Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was governor of California for the time he was governor there. Uh, let's see. Uh, and he, uh, he said he supports a lot of Donald Trump's uh, ideas and issues too. So great vocal support of Donald Trump also. Um, something you probably didn't know about him. His son's a professional skateboarder, which uh, I know out in California, man, that's big stuff. They're down on the beach. They got the big skateboard parks and uh, I'm too uh, big and I'm too old for skateboarding. Uh, I'll probably break my neck, but uh, hey, if you're young and you can do that stuff, why not? Uh, uh, I do remember shooting a movie, part of my movie that I shot. We shot at a skateboard park, and man, there was some some rough little punk kids down there, boy. They all had their big friggin' mouse and gave us a hard time. I guess they saw an old fat guy like me down there, and I guess, hey, he don't belong in a skate park. Let's give him a hard time. So what are you going to do? Much kids, ain't much can do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Got two comedy albums out back in this. As you see, Paul Rodriguez, he's from the day when you could put out a comedy album. You can't do that anymore because all the free downloading online, you can't make any money off them anymore. So now it's the comedy special where you got to pay to see it online, where the comedy album you could sell. They had record stores back in the day. You went down to the record store and you bought a comedy album. You didn't download it online. You got artwork with it. It was such a cool thing. You popped it in the, the car CD player while you're driving around your friends and you'd crack up together. Your parents weren't around to hear it. You'd laugh at whatever you wanted. And that's what made, you know, the, the, the great comedy album. And it's sad that, you know, kids now they're sitting with their home computer in the room and listening to comedy on there, but it really takes something away from the adventure. In my opinion, when you don't have the album, you just got the, uh, you know, then they said, you don't get the artwork and you're not listening, you know, you're not listening to the album in order. You could get, you know, a big thing is putting things in order. So it all makes sense. And if you're listening to an album out of order, just as you download, whatever, you know, skip from the album you're downloading it from, where it's not making as much sense as, as it was intended by the artist to make you laugh. But uh, two albums, Eddie out. Uh, you're American. You can speak Spanish now. And cheese and macaroni, which I guess is a backward twist on macaroni and cheese, which I love a good macaroni and cheese with my g Vegas buffalo sauce. I love it. Good buffalo macaroni and cheese. Nothing better, man. And I'd be willing to bet that Paul Rodriguez, he likes some good freaking macaroni and cheese with buffalo sauce too. g Vegas buffalo sauce, baby. It's the best. And uh, hey, man, I got to get out there to Laugh Factory someday, and I hope to meet Paul Rodriguez while I'm there, because that would just be a cool and, and thank him for all the years of laughter he gave us as a kid and as adults, and uh, and just, just not even being a great comedian, but being a great man and giving back, you know, once he had the notoriety to, to give back to charities and causes and stuff like that, because I said before, it's not only, you know, you know, it's not only, it's, it's a responsibility. It's not just something you should do. It's a responsibility that you have to give back. No, you should give back. You have to, you know, people are nice enough to put you in that position. You got to be responsible enough to give back. Hey, we're giving back here on Funny Like Clown Podcast, history of comedy. And uh, I've had plenty of, you know, the great comedians, all of them say it. If you want to be a great comedian, man, know the history of the art. You want to be a good plumber? You better know the history of plumbing. You want to be a good car maker? You better know the history of cars. You want to be a good comedian? Better know the history of comedy. We'll see you next time, folks. Good night.